we're going to put some white out. So again, I've got a little bit of white here. Let's put that. Uh, let's put that there. And I'll also put a bit over here with the white, or the yellow. Sorry. Um, I'm going to use some oh, uh, permanent rose, which is like a pinky, a pinky yellow, uh, a pinky red. So there we go. A bit of that in there. <clears throat> Um, and just clean that up because it's got a bit dirty. I'll also be using some um, purple. Um, Stuart, if we haven't got white, can we use acrylic white? Uh, you, Water down. Uh, do you have um, gouache? I do, but it's like in a block. Um, it's kind of hardened. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, you can mix acrylic white in there, but it's probably going to, well, be careful with your watercolour brushes. Yeah, Don't let okay. it dry out. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> so then, um, the other colours then are some cerulean blue. Let's just put a bit of that out. So a bit of cerulean. And I will also use a little bit of a, a purple as well. Um, if I can find it again. I've done all my colours today. They keep running away from me. Had them all laid out, ready. Uh, purple, purple, purple. Right. Oh, I'll find that in a minute. I have got some out on my um, on my palette here. So, and that's purple there actually. So we'll use that. Okay. So those are the initial colours, and then around in sort of the trees, we're going to be bringing in more blues and more indigos. So you'll probably need some darker colours. Um, for that, I will use uh, indigo, which is a very dark blue. But if you don't have a dark blue, as I said, like we did use last week, you can use some um, phthalo or even Payne's grey with some yellow in it. That will give you a, a dark green, um, something of that nature, or even a bit of burnt umber. So you could use some burnt umber. I know it's brown, but... <clears throat> You could put some blue with that and that'll give you a very dark color as well. So I'll just put a bit of burnt umber out. Okay, so those are my colors. Right, let's crack on. So the basic principle of the, um, the sunlight for this particular painting is gonna be very similar to the one we did last week. So I'm gonna start off um, having my sunlight area right up the top here, like it is in the reference, almost um, just creeping into the reference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw let me just tilt that so I can see the, the shine. So I'm going to draw a little round area. So leaving a dry patch of paper like we did last week. So this bit right at the top here is dry and then around it is wet. And then I'm just going to expand that water out. Oops. Just very quickly. So obviously I don't want to spend too long on this because we did some of this last week. There we go. Then I'm going to dip straight into the, and this is unusual because we don't normally do it this way around. So I'm going to go into the red first and the white. So I'm going to mix that up so I get a sort of a pink. I don't want it to be too, too red and I don't want it to be too white. So obviously a pinkish colour. And then coming in slightly from the edge of the um, that white area, so leaving a few millimeters, I'm then going to start to drop this color in and around on my wet area, giving it room to grow, like so. Yeah, wash that off. Mm. Now I'm going to dip into some of the lemon yellow. So on my palette, I'm just mixing up a little bit of lemon yellow. Let me do it over here. Hopefully it won't go green. So some lemon yellow, and again, a bit of white. So clean white, not white with um, red in it. So it's gotta be very clean. So a bit of white and lemon yellow together, mixed up. And then that is gonna go just inside the edge, still in the wet patch of the, um, the sun area. So it gives it room to creep out. And clean off my brush. 
Now I'm going to dip into some um, some red and a slightly go with a lemon yellow again. So it's more of an orangey red. We could even use a bit of brown if you wanted to. And that's going to start to come on the outside of this red area. So it's more golden. So it's all in the wet patch still. Let's bring that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to expand that out. So I'm going to pull that out with water. So just using moisture now. So just pull that all the way around. So that we get a nice bleed into the surrounding area. Okay, and then I can expand that right out, dipping into more yellow, a little bit more of the light red. So this is a bit of under color now for when we bring the darks over the top. So I'm gonna bring some yellow in over here on this right hand side. Is that on wet steels or on dry? Uh, it's on pretty much wet. Okay. Okay. So a little bit of yellow there. And then I'm just gonna spray that out. So just using a spray bottle, just gonna spray all of this wash so we don't have any edges at the bottom of the wash. And just let that run down the paper like, like so. Now, because the nature of this wash, and this is why I'm getting you to practice it first, we can't let that dry. So now we need to go into that with our dark colors or darker colors. Okay, into all of this, we're gonna be putting darker color. So let me just mop up a little bit of this moisture. So this is why we're doing it on a smaller bit of paper because obviously doing this on a larger bit of paper first, you're gonna need a lot more paint and obviously timing is critical. So let's now dive into some of the indigo and a bit of the cerulean blue. Sorry, Stuart, what color if you haven't got indigo? Just use um, phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. Okay. Or any, uh, any other kind of dark blue that you've got. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Just put a bit of yellow in there, just a teeny bit of yellow. And then I'm gonna to start to work into this wet area. So this is all wet still. So I'm just gonna leave some of that yellow showing through, but I'm bringing this paint nice and strongly into all of this dark and right up into the sort of sunny area. So slosh that on, slosh a bit on this left-hand side. So the darker we make it around the sun or the sun flare, I should say, the brighter the flare will look. So I'm actually gonna now change into some orangey colors. Just as we get closer to the sun. And bring that in nice and strong. Little bits here and there. I'm gonna go a little bit more yellow at the bottom. Is the red, the um, pink red, neat, Stuart? Pretty much neat, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, all the colours are pretty much, you know, pretty neat here at this point because we're going onto wet paper and it's all kind of just mixing as I'm painting it on there. So I'm just putting on some um, gamboge or some um, orangey yellow there we go so we just fill up the whole of that thing we need to get that to tilt a little bit more down now okay now before this dries and this is the this is quite critical so where this color now meets the original sun color i'm just squeezing all the water out of my brush and i'm just going to feather the edge just very very lightly just to knock down the edges between the two colors so I don't get a hard edge. I want it to be very soft in there. 
um, because obviously this is kind of a light effect and we don't really want any sharp, hard edges as such. I mean, you can pull out a little bit if you want to give the idea of a glow or, you know, the sun rays. So you can kind of drag the brush through some of that paint to give it the idea of a bit of a bit of a flare, but I'm not going to overdo that because um, that can get a bit too heavy. But we'll just give the idea of it. There we go. And then um, all of this down here, then you have the option to start bringing in color or we can let it dry. Personally, I would, if, if it was still all wet and you, you know, you're kind of keeping up, then I would bring color into that now. But I know obviously a lot of you are going to be doing um, this initial part. So I won't do that just yet. But ideally, if you were to do it, then you'd be dropping in your blues and your purples and those colors into this edge now before all of this is dry to give it a chance to kind of merge, kind of coming down all of this nice wet area into all those other colors and then we were going to drop some salt into it um, but obviously if you can get this bit right all of this down here is a bit easier to paint this is the most tricky part so if you can get that bit right then this will be a lot lot easier as we kind of come down the painting so let me give you started <clears throat> so the same process to begin with we're just going to do our little um, dry area right at the top I mean, if you want to bring it down a bit, you can do, but I'm just going to stick to the same process. So I'm doing a little sort of U shape. Um, and because it's a bigger picture, you might want to go slightly, give yourself a little bit more white. Um, it's really up to you. It's your picture after all, you can paint it as, as you see fit. So I'm not going to have too big an area of white, just enough to kind of get a bit of a glow. <clears throat> So then I'm just expanding out now that wet area, just continuing the sort of U shape, making it a bigger U shape. Both sides. Give yourself enough room so that when you bring all of the colors in that we're gonna be bringing in next, they're coming into wet paper rather than onto dry paper. Um, that's the only thing really you just need to try and bear in mind. Okay, so there we go. So that's nice and moist. So I'm now going to get my color. So same process for dipping into the, um, the red and the white first to give us a pink. Go slightly stronger. There we go. So Coming in, doesn't matter which side first, let's go um, right side this time. Leaving yourself a little bit of space to that dry patch. Just going all the way around in a sort of a U shape. Allowing that pink to sort of um, creep out. Okay, that'll do. Then we go into our yellows. So the yellow and a bit of white. Just mixing that up on a on my side palette here. Sorry, there's a bit of white and yellow mixed together. And again, I'm going to uh, just bring that in just on the edge of the pinks, just letting the two touch together. Some of it might flare out like it's done there, which is quite nice. Okay, just let that creep. Those two colours move together. Then I'm going into the, um, the more warmer reds. So you can use cadmium red and a bit of yellow in that. And that's gonna come on the outside of the pinky red. And you can leave this a little bit more broken if you want to, you don't have to do it as a U, you can just do it as a broken piece of shape. <clears throat> there we go. I mean, every time you do this sort of sunset thing, you're going to get a slight variation in the way it turns out. So don't worry. Okay, now we go into our darker colors. 
So now we're dipping into some of the blues. Uh, sorry, in fact, before we do that, I forgot to put the yellows in. So let's do that. So dipping into some of the gamboge. So this is going to be the yellows that <clears throat> sort of showing through in the background of the trees. So I'm going to pull that out on the right, pull it out on the left a little bit. And we can work that into those reds so that we get a kind of a bleeding of the two colors together. It's a bit watery, got a bit more pigment in that. A bit more yellow in there, a bit too watery. I think where the paper's puddling a little bit, it's collecting. So, okay, so there we go. We'll just bleed all that out to the right. And then I'll get the spray bottle and then I'll just give this a quick spray. Make sure it's pumped up. I'm just going to spray the bottom of that out. Let that come down on this right hand side a bit more. Well, in fact, it can come down everywhere, but mainly on the right, because that's where our um, light area is going to be. Just spraying that out. There we go. I'm just going to mop up a little bit of that excess moisture. So I need the paper to be a little bit flatter for this next bit. As I start to bring the darker colours in. Before I bring the darker colours in, I'm going to bring a little bit more um, of the yellows so the gamboge, perhaps a little bit of cerulean in there as well, tiny bit, not too much. Just going to wiggle that into some of this lower area where the grasses are going to come later. Um, Stuart, is that on wet or on dry? Yeah, it's all on wet, yeah. On wet. Mm -hmm. So just wiggle that in a bit. Obviously it's not gonna stay as strokes as such because it's on wet paper. So it all just kind of mix and merge, but it's just to get us started. I might even take a little bit more of that pinky color that we used in the sun up here. With a bit of white in it. Just drop a bit of that in as well in places while it's still moist. So that gives it a chance to mix and merge. Bear that down there. Okay, clean the brush off. Now we need to go into some darker colours. So into my um, indigo, bit of cerulean in there, and then just going to check to see how wet the paper is. Drying out a little bit, I'm just going to give that a little spray. Just to add a bit of moisture back in there, it's getting a bit dry. And then straight on with my darker colours leaving some of the yellow showing through. Bit on the right hand, left hand side here. So nice and strong. I 
obviously, as I said before, the darker we make these colors, the um, brighter the sun will, or the sun effect will be. Just dipping into a little bit of purple there as well. I think around the sun area, it's got a little bit dry now. It's a bit slow, it should have gone a bit quicker. Never mind. Just bring a little bit of that in there and then I'll run some water through it just to add a bit of interest. Okay, put it with that too much. I'm gonna get a pipette, some clean water. Oh, that pipette's filthy. Get a clean pipette. I'm gonna run a bit of moisture into these. It's got a little bit too dry. Just to break it up a bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna spray out this right hand side so we don't get too many hard edges. And this bottom edge. Give that a little spray. Okay. Just gonna soften a little bit of this off. Want to fiddle a bit too much, I can do that later. So, where these are kind of run a little bit too much, I'm just going to spray those out. Don't want that, don't need that either. Can't really spray that out because obviously it's going to affect that, so I might have to leave those. Too bothered. Let's run in some um, more dark, so a bit more cerulean. To tilt the board a bit flatter. A bit of yellow this time into it, maybe some of the gamboge, so it's slightly greener. It's going to fill in this top corner with some more colour and then start to think about bringing in the next row of foliage. which is gonna come um, at the bottom of this. So some blue, cerulean blue, and a bit of red in there, just to purple it up. Again, pretty strong. Tiny little bit of white, not too much. And I'm gonna run that in at the bottom whilst it's still wet. So unfortunately with this type of this type of painting, because it is so time critical, it's not so easy to break it up into bite-sized chunks of to allow you to kind of Stuart, what did you mix the cerulean with, please? Uh, just put a tiny little bit of red in there and some white. All right, okay, thank you. Little bit of that in there as well. Just a few spots up in the tree. Clean the brush off. Okay, so I probably could now actually give you a chance to catch up. Um, all I'm going to do before I stop is I just want to work a little bit around the edge of that sun. It's not gone as quite as nicely as I wanted it to. So I'm just going to get a clean brush. And I'm just going to feather out some of the edge just to soften it off. And 
stop it being quite so heavy. And obviously always the risk with doing this is that you're gonna agitate all the paint that's already there. Um, but sometimes the risk is worth it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I just wanna lose a little bit of that red there. It's a bit too heavy. Run that back into those existing colors. Just soften it off a little bit, that's a bit better. Just soften all that off. So I'm not really adding anything here, so hopefully it'll give you time to catch up. And a clean brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just re-wet um, this lower section. So I'm gonna leave <clears throat> um, a good amount of this area dry. I'll need to bring some water down to the top of it because otherwise we'll end up with a big line. But I wanna leave most of that, this sort of V area dry. And the rest of this is all gonna get some um, water on it so that we can bring the paint into it. Okay, and I'll probably spray some of that out on the right there. So I'm not too worried about what goes on there. So there we are, so a bit of moisture. Now into that, first color is I'm gonna take some cerulean blue. Um, I put a tiny little bit of white in it, not too much. So sort of a pale, a pale blue. Uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of the lemon yellow that we started off with the, with the sun with. So it's more of a bluey, aquary green. And I'm going to start to drop that into this moisture. Fairly thick, because obviously uh, I don't want it to run too fast. So bringing that in all the way across, perhaps down a little bit further, put a bit more yellow in there. Let's have a little bit more yellow here, so it's a bit greenier in places. Obviously just allowing the color to interchange or mix. I'm gonna take some of the, uh, oh, wrong color, some of the purple. Again, put a bit of white in it, just so it's not so dark. slightly lighter purple, some of the cerulean blue in there, so it's a bit more of a bluey purple, more lavenderish. I'll bring a bit of that in there as well into those colors. All the way across. While I'm at it, I'm going to take a little bit of, just as I'm going, because obviously I don't want this to dry out too much before I can get some salt on. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt into that. Not too much, just a little bit, just to get a tiny bit of a reaction. Not going to get stacks of reaction, but. Okay, now dipping into a little bit of the pink into that purple. Just get some of that on. Take the spray bottle. It's just getting a little bit heavy, that top edge, so I'm just gonna spray it a tiny bit. Just to get the colors to mix a bit more. Okay, then into some green. We've got a nice emeraldy green up here. A bit more of the cerulean blue in it. Get some of that on. <clears throat> Bring that all the way through. 
these colors. And spray out the top of that, <clears throat> those flower heads in a moment. Someone got their mic unmuted. It might be me. Sorry. Just mute, mute your mic. Just mop up a little bit of that excess. Okay, now coming down into the foreground, a bit more blue, a bit more purple. And then we'll, we'll chuck the salt on and see what happens. So just mixing the colors on the, on the painting really. So some cooler, cooler colors, warmer, uh, brighter colors, cooler colors. Bit of white in it as well, if you want. Perhaps even a teeny bit of brown as we're coming down into the foreground. And then fairly quickly, just gonna get a bit of spray and then also some salt. Just give all of that a little spray just to mix a bit more. Lay it a bit flatter with my salt. And then I'm just gonna drop in some salt over all of this. Mainly in the darker areas. And then I just need to leave that, leave it alone to see if we get some reaction. Okay, that's it.